Hello! Even more features for Steve's Factory Manager and personally I do enjoy these ones. I think they are quite useful. So what we have uh, is simple, well simply just two commands but they are quite powerful and these are the container variables and the for each loops and to be able to test these I'm going to make a small example uh, where I do something along uh, those lines there and about something like that. So nothing ex uh, well, two advanced, yes, a receiver and two emitters like that. Okay, let's create a variable. The weird thing about this variable is that, well, we have no input nor any output. But that's fine anyway. So this is a variable declaration, so we can declare a var variable. And if we go into this menu here, we can select which variable we want to declare. So you can only have 16. Uh, I think that's not going to be a problem. So 16 per manager. So here we have the white one, the orange, the magenta, light blue, yellow, and so on. So uh, all the 16 uh, Minecraft colors like that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with the orange one. But then we can also do like this. So we can uh, rename commands like you always can. But if we do it for a variable declaration, it will also rename the actual variable itself. So now it says emitters there on the orange one. Right, so that's the first one. We'll get to these global and local things later. So I'm just going to leave it the local. And then we get a type. So here we can define what types we're going to use. And uh, the reason why you can do this is so it's getting easier to see what can uh, be added so you don't get uh, everything in the list. Uh, currently we get all it has here. But you can also use it to prevent things from uh, from being added and so on. Maybe you have one variable with a lot of things. So basically, one of these variables is is a list of containers of of the diff, uh, different types. I'm just going to use emitters. So now this uh, variable called emitters, which is pre f quite suitable, we can even make it red to make it even more suitable. Uh, well, will be a list of these emitters, and I will use the two emitters here. So now we can see the receiver disappeared because n n now this is a a emitter variable, not because I call it emitters, but because I told it only emitters are allowed here. But of course, you can use them more. And you will see in in the further examples here. I'm not going to use inventories nor tanks too much, yes, because it's much easier to show you how it works with the emitters and receivers. But it's the same way for the other ones. So this will be everything for now. So now I have declared. Uh, well, the definition of the emitters is basically t take these two emitters that we have already. All right. So let's create a trigger here. And you might have guessed that I'm going to select the redstone receiver like so. So just if we get a uh, button press there. And then what I'm going to do now is open here. So here, here's the difference. So now we get the two uh, redstone emitters like so. But we also get the emitters variable like this. So be we can select it there. But we can't select it up here. Not because this is the receiver's part. But, uh, well, kind of. But it's because we haven't selected receivers there. So if I select it to contain receivers as well, then we can select it here. So if you don't need them, uh, I would recommend to deselect the ones you don't need simply to uh, keep it a bit uh, cleaner in the interface here. But if you need an, an well, a variable with inventories, tanks, images, and receivers, then you just have all selected just fine. Uh, everything is going to work as expected. Right, so what I want to do is select these emitters here. And here's a small note now. What we can do is hold shift to see that this these actually belongs to the emitters. But these won't actually be the current value of, of what we have in the emitters because we'll see later on that we can change what is a part of the dec uh, declaration, the variable declaration. But, but it's basically what we have selected in here. So if we change that value later, it's not going to reflect uh, uh, get reflected in these text here, so you can use them sort of as as some labels if you want to. It's just a way to easily see what is declared where, not what we actually have in in the variables there. But more to that later. So now I've selected the emitters here, and that has been declared as being in both of them. And now if I do that and press the button, uh, we can see that they are both turned on. And if I do that, so I add a third one and simply add that there that's also going to uh, be turned on and to allow this to be seen easier we can uh, move it to the toggler instead and it will toggle back and forth so the first good feature with these variables are that it's very easy to add more things we just added one more thing here and everything worked all right like so uh, because uh, we just uh, added here now we can refer to it here right so 
what can we do more? Well, let's do the following. So uh, this one, instead of toggling, we can tell it to set it to a fixed signal of, let's say, 5. Right. And now what I'm going to do is create another emitter afterwards, which sets all of them to 15. So this might not make any sense. Why would I set it to 5,000 and to 15? Well, I'm going to create another variable here, and that's not for, uh, well, as a declaration. Now I'm declaring the white variable, uh, like so, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in here to the connections, and instead of declaration, I can set it to standard instead. Like so. And as you can see, we get the standard input and the standard output there just fine. And some th things have changed now. We can see some other menus. Uh, we lost the, uh, the one co called container types. We got the value order instead. And if we open up here, we can also see a difference. So instead of global and local, we get add, remove, or set. Or well, and set, that is. So what I'm going to do now is connect this here like so, but it's going to complain because this variable hasn't been declared. So you need to declare a variable before you use it and well we can't declare it when we use the standard one here. So what I want to do is go to the red one, the arrow disappears and we can see emitters here because that's what it's being named up here. So that's one reason why I want to declare them so we can give them names. And uh, What I want to do is click remove. So this should be fairly straightforward. If you have add and you add things to the variable, if you have remove, you remove things from it and set, you just set it to the value you give it. So basically it clears it first and then adds things. Okay, so let's go to container. And what I want to do is uh, click on that one. That's the middle one, as you can see. One block away, three, five. Okay, and I will just ignore value order for now. Right, there you go. So now if I press this button, what's going to happen? Well, all will be turned on. But what really happened is the following. Look at that. The middle signal is much weaker than the, than the other two. And the reason why that happened was because first we set all of them, all three, uh, to a signal of five. Then we removed the middle one from the variable. Uh, so that's that one. So that was removed. And then we increased the signal to 15. But since the middle one was removed from the variable, it didn't update to 15 because we just told the two to on the sides to do that. Okay, let's move on. So a button there, uh, and I'm going to add that to be able to uh, clear things because that might be useful. Here you go. So the second one, like so. And what I want to do is uh, simply grab the emitter, use all the emitters in there, and then set them to zero. Right, so we removed the middle one from the uh, uh, from the emitters, so that shouldn't turn off, right? No, right. So what happens here is simply that each time we trigger this command to run, it's going to load whatever we have in here. So this is the, basically the default value. So the default value is basically all three, and therefore when we want to clear it, we get all three, and then we can clear it here. So now very easily we just get all the emitters in this setup here, and also in this setup here, and if we change here, it's going to affect it too. So it's very easy to set up like that. But if we go up here to the variable and set to global instead, this behavior has now changed. So now, if we remove anything, nothing is going to update. So now I do that, so now this middle one has been removed, and therefore when I press this button again, it's not going to uh, bother about that signal. This signal here, if we take a look, it's just for the emitters in this uh, thing here. Uh, this one is not a part of it. We removed it from there. So what I was talking about earlier, this doesn't actually update uh, here. So it's still going to say emitters here. So you can see what you have declared there rather than what the current state is. Because then you can keep secret what all the variables are as well as um, well see how it's set up rather than how its current state is. Uh, right, so what do we want... Uh, how do we want, uh, do it if we want to reset the whole thing? Well, if we deselect that, it's going to uh, wait for the next, next trigger to happen, and then it's going to load the global values again. So the global values will obviously be loaded at some point, and that's once per, uh, well, per variable you have. But if you deselect this, it's going to load it again next time. And the reason why it turned on 
on itself was because, well, the, uh, this while load signal is actually triggering even though it's not connected to anything. And that allows it to have all three like so, and therefore it goes like that. But if I press that one again, it's obviously getting removed, and then when we press that again, that will be kept like so. But if we go back to use a local value instead, that means that it's going to be uh, loaded from its declaration each time it's getting triggered, and therefore, well, we can reset it all like so. Right, so that's that. Uh, let's introduce another variable. Okay, I'm going to call it, uh, let's see, current emitter. Right, and then I select, let's select the orange one like so. And I will keep this as a local one. And they will use the emitters only. And I'm not going to select any containers here actually. Worth noting, we can actually collect that one and therefore we will would get everything from the emitters. Uh, but, but yeah. Uh, so I, I won't select anything here. That means that by default this will be empty. It will be an empty list of emitters. Nothing will be there, obviously. Right, so now we have that prepared. Uh, what I want to do is, uh, let's see, I want to unhook this one. And instead of uh, uh, outputting here to that one, I want to uh, output it only to the current one. So. Obviously, we have nothing there at the moment, but the one that is declared as the current one will be the one that we're going to use. How do we define the current one? Well, I'm going to do that in this one. So let's uh, see. Let's go to where is it? The orange one. There you go. Current emitter. Uh, the names help here. And if you select something that you haven't declared, you will obviously see that up there. This variable hasn't been declared. Uh, so I'm going to use set. And then I'm going to head over to value order, which will be very helpful. Oh, well, actually, here first emitters. So what I want to do is take everything, maybe not, from the emitters and put in the current emitter. That wouldn't make too much sense because that's not going to do anything. But I'm going to head over to value order here and click on use all and now I have one instead. So you should, well, by default it's going to move everything there if we did that, but now I'm just going to grab the first one. So if I press this button, that one is going to be turned on. There we go. Like so. Um, and it depends on which order you added them in the beginning, uh, the standard order that we had. If we use cable order instead, we will get the first one uh, from the cable. So this is closest, uh, like so. So it's closest uh, if we take a look, we should take a look here. It's closest like this, it's the first one. So therefore that's the one we get. Uh, but of course we can reverse it and therefore we get the uh, uh, one in the end, like so. Obviously, that was the one we got when we used standard order, but standard order uh, is basically order that we add them to the list. So if we add them in a weird way, that's not always going to be the opposite of, of the cable order. And that's why we have the reverse thing there. But you might have noticed this one thing that is quite funny to, to use in some contraptions. Randomize. It's going to randomize the list and then grab the first one. So now if I press that button, we got that one. Now we got that one. Now we got that one. That one. That one again. That one, and so on. So as you can see, it's just randomizing and grabbing one. Of course, we can, if we want to, grab two. So now we're going to grab grab two of them, uh, like so. And that's also going to be randomized, like. So, of course, uh, what's happening now is simply that we move them over there. This will still be in the emitters one, which we can see uh, if we uh, do this. Here we reset them all, but that's obviously because they are local, so it's being reset there. But if we want to, we could also uh, create a redstone emitter here. Now we're not going to, we won't see anything because now I'm going to reset, uh, reset them all. Here we go. So now this won't do anything because it's turned on and then it turns them up, off again. So note that when we set things here, we're not moving them. We're just cloning them into the new list. So they will still be in the old list. Of course, if we wanted to, uh, we could do something like, uh, let's see. We add this variable here and then we go into standard mode there. And then we go to the, um, the one with all the emitters like so. And then we can remove everything from the current emitters. So all of a sudden they will be removed. Obviously they will still be there next time we trigger it if it's a local one, but if it's a global one they will be lost there so they can't be picked again. Uh, so maybe we should do that actually. So let's go in here just to show the example um, and I'll set it to one there and randomize and I will set this 
to be uh, a global one, like so. Yes, we can reset that to make sure. Right, so now when I press this button here, it can't be get the same again. And as you can see, if I reset here, it's not going to reset them because they have been removed. And now there's nothing there anymore, so now it's not going to happen. So if you want to like randomize which order they get, but don't want to get them again, then it might be a good idea to do it like this. Uh, and then we will have to manually reset it uh, like this if you want to. If you don't want it to be manually resettable like that, obviously you can just add a variable here with the set one, and then just click all of these. So yes, because we're working with variable, doesn't mean that you all of a sudden can't select these ones again, like like that. So just click them and, and that will work. Right, so that's everything for, for these variables, I think, for now. But we obviously have this for each one as well. And this is a funny looking one. So previously we had a variable which was the first one without pins. This is the first one would have some pins on the side. So we have input, output, and a for each one. Right, so I'm going to use these ones still. Uh, let's go back to local there. Right, so let's see, let's unhook this one to start with. I don't know exactly what I'm going to need. Uh, here we go. Okay, so I hooked this up here, which triggers the for each one. But now we get uh, some issues here. L list variable hasn't been declared. Okay. Right, so here we have the list and the element. What I'm going to do is head over here, emitters, and then current emitter. What this means is that it's going to go through every single element of the emitters because that's what I have selected as my list. Then, each time it does that, it's going to put that element, that emitter, in the current emitter variable. It's going to set it there, so that's the only thing that's going to be there as the element. So, if I do something like... Uh, I don't need you... Let's remove this. Okay, so what is this? Yeah, so that's the one setting it to 15. And then if I use the, uh, the current emitter there, if I do like that, like so, we will see that it's going to turn them all on, like so. So nothing special there. Basically, we go through them all, and each time we do so, we get a new one in the current one, and then we uh, do things there. So obviously, you could do this anyway, so you could just set set it to all of them from, from the beginning. Uh, but to show what it actually does, we could, of course, do like that. I don't know. Do like that, and I create another emitter here. Uh, Let's see, what do I want to do? Where's the last one? That would be... I should have checked which one is which. Here we go. Uh, I can check here. So, yeah, it's the first one that I haven't selected. Oh, right, derp. The new feature that I forgot. So, uh, it, basically, when I added this, like so, I don't know which one it is, uh, because it can be tricky with the coordinates, but obviously the other ones have been declared elsewhere, so I can just hold shift here and see uh, which one is the one I haven't? Uh, and it might be a good idea to get a correct one. Like that. So now I see these ones have been selected as emitters, but this one hasn't. So that's obviously the one I wanted to use. Right. So some help there. It's, it's not a proper labeling system, but it helps a bit. Right. So what I want to do now is increase this by one. Like so. Okay. So what happens if I press this button? One, two, three. So we get a single of three because... Well, we loop through all of these three. Okay, maybe not that interesting. So let's set up a new system over here. One, two, three of these instead. Okay. You go there, and then some redstone, like so. I create a trigger, like so, and I need a variable. And now if I go over here, I'm going to use... Okay, let's use the... Uh, let's use the same, actually, the red one here for my receivers. Uh, let's select receivers here, and I select them all, the and then I need a, another one. But the reason why I did that was to make it easier to see which one is what. Um, actually, let's ignore that, actually. I don't need that. Okay, so here's all the receivers, and then I need a variable for the current re uh, receiver. So I'm going to use a for each loop here. Uh, we can use that one actually. For, oh well, element, like so. And I don't want to set that to anything, but I can tell it that we only want receivers. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now I declare those there. And I have a trigger that goes all the time, as you can see. Uh, I want to create a redstone here. I want to set that one to zero. So first of all, I start with resetting it. And then what I do later is, the loop 
and I want to define that as the list being the receivers and the element being the one I call the element, the white one there. Right. Okay. So now each time we go through this, I will get a different element, which we will be able to see quite clearly when I do this. So we create a redstone condition, and what I want to do is check the element. Right. So now it's actually going to give us options to uh, to define it differently depending on if we have multiple. Uh, nodes there. The reason why is because it doesn't know that we only will have one element in here. So you can define what happens. But we just leave it like this. It doesn't matter because we know we will only have one. Uh, and then I want to check. Yeah, that's good. Right? So that one goes there. And then when that's done we can do this for instance. Okay, so what's going on now? Well, each time we start well this trigger it resets the emitter. Okay, then when that has happened, uh, it will loop through all the receivers we have, and for each that has a redstone signal, this signal will become one stronger. To check that easily, I'm going to add some lamps here. There you go, and then some some levers this time. Okay, now I have a signal of one, a signal of two. And a signal of three. If I remove anyone there, it's going to go back. Of course, it has a small delay because it's just updating it every time this is being triggered. Of course, we could set it up so each time the uh, pulse changes here by using the, uh, having this redstone controlled, we're going to update it. But now that is not how it's set up. So as you can see, when we loop through here, each time we do so, we get an element uh, in uh, in wherever. Uh, well, in here. And then we check that one for a signal, and if it has a signal, we increase the strength of this one. And the reason why it works is obviously because we also reset it to zero every time we start. And if you'd want to do something afterwards, then you simply connect it here. So it will go through this thing here once every for every element, and then it will continue over in this direction, like so. Right, so what more? What can we do? Well, Loop order. So we had value order for the for the items here, but now it makes a bit more sense uh, for the for each loop because now we can define which order these things will happen, which can come in uh, in handy if you want to do things for inventories and want to prioritize some things and you know things like that. But we have the randomize here as well, uh, like that. So if I select that one actually and just select two, now we will get very weird results because now this will uh, actually go back and forth a bit. Because it's going to pick two of these two, uh, three and sum up the values of those. So now if it picks these two, it will get a value of two. If it picks that one together with something else, it will get a value of one. So so a bit odd. But as you can see, each time it's doing that, it's going to randomize the order and, and pick the top two. So we saw it earlier when we got randomized uh, a value. But now we randomize the list order and just go through the first two and then we stop after two. So you can define uh, which order it should go in and, and so on. Like that. And that's pretty much it actually. So you had the four each loop. You can go through lists, setting the variables and then you can do things with the variables. Of course it also works with the inputs here but we won't uh, see anything here because well we haven't told in the declaration here that we can use it with inventories. It will show up like so. So you can use it uh, like that. And and it's all good, I think. Uh, variables like that. And I'm just going to show a very silly example that I built here. So this is a random guessing machine. So what I need to do is realize which no uh, button here is going to trigger this uh, uh, lamp over there. So let's see. There you go. So th it was that one. And now if I press again, that's not going to be it. So each time I press. So it's quite a silly machine, but if we take a look here, it's not a lot of, of commands actually. I define the user input, which is a local variable uh, with receivers listing all my receivers. So I can very easily add more. I just add them in here and it's done. I have a correct button one, which is global actually. And that's a receiver with this one selected, which is the first one. So the first time you, you run this, this one is the one you want to press. But then when we do that, so we actually check for the correct button. So when you uh, press the correct button, then what we want to do is output a redstone signal to to this guy here, so we get well a signal that we uh, sold it. But then we simply do this: set the correct button from the user input with one random thing. And since it's global, 
it's going to remember which we had and therefore we can use that in the trigger. So as you can see now I'm actually using something I'm setting further down as a trigger to start it all over again. So this time if I see if I can find it, it was there instead of somewhere over there. But this was obviously just a silly example of what you can do. And like I said, my all my examples here uh, were using redstone because it's easy to see you get uh, interaction right away. You don't have to bother about chests and so on. But of course everything works exactly the same with inventories and tanks and that's pretty much it. Good luck.